In this video, you're gonna learn some of my top tips when it comes to nailing your sales interview. Now, I personally have a sales job right out of college working at Oracle as an account executive. And after that, I was able to get a job at a Y Combinator back startup that was extremely hot and growing exponentially quick. And literally over 100,000 people over the years have went through my sales training. And I'm gonna show you some of the best tips that I've learned and observed from my students and myself that I'm gonna give to you today on how to crush your sales interview so that you can get your sales dream job. All right, so the first thing you gotta cover is when you are going into a sales interview, you're gonna have to do some research, right? You can't just go in blind because if you go in blind, you're literally not differentiating yourself from anybody else. So what kind of impressed me, especially for the last few people I hired, is when we did the sales interview, I remember some people, they researched my company, they watched my YouTube videos, they identified certain pain points that my company potentially could have based on outside looking in. And then they gave me some solutions how they may be able to solve those pains, right? So that actually takes a lot of effort to do. And so whether or not those solutions actually solve the problem, you know, most likely they won't because they don't have full context, but the fact that they actually did the research to offer a potential solution is enough for me to say yes. So when you're thinking about a sales job specifically, you want to think about, okay, when you're a salesperson, what problem are you solving? The company needs to make more money. How are they going to make more money and how do you fit in that? Well, they need to make more money by generating more leads, closing more deals. So when you solve a company's problem from a sales perspective, what you're doing is you're going to say, hey, I'm going to get you more leads by this. So you're going to say, I identify that these companies and these industries have this problem that I think your product can solve. How I'm going to get you more leads is I'm going to first cold email them. I'm going to call them. I'm going to do this and that and try to sell your product and service in this specific way, right? So from there, you're already showing the other person that you're taking initiative, do outbound lead generation and generate more leads and close more deals. And that creates immense value for a company. Research a company, of course, understand their industry, understand what pains they solve, who they serve, and show them that you're going to be the person that generates leads for this company. And for sure, you're going to get hired because you're basically saying like, hey, you know, you're going to hire me. I'm going to make you so much money. How can they say no, right? Of course, you're not saying it like that. You're just implying that by giving your case study, by showing your research. Now you can talk about all your past experience that you had, but the best way to show someone that you are the real deal is to sell them in the interview. So during an interview, the person that you are actually selling or the product or service you're selling is actually yourself. You have to convince this hiring manager, this entrepreneur, that you are a good fit for them. Because if you can't sell yourself, you know everything about yourself, then you're not gonna be able to sell a product and service. So first thing is, what is your strength? How do you fit into this company? What pains are you solving for this particular company? Why are you better than everyone else who may be applying for this job? If you cannot answer those questions for yourself, you probably don't deserve the job. So learning how to sell yourself is the key in showing someone that you can actually sell their products and services. So if you wanna get into the fix of how you actually sell yourself, step number one, Body language, tonality. How do you sound? How do you look? What's the vibe of when somebody actually meets you and shakes your hand? Do they get a good feeling? Do they feel like you're just like them? Do they like you as a human being? You know, if they met you in passing on the street, would they be like, yo, that person's pretty cool. If you can create that feeling, that's the first step. The second step is once you create that feeling of likeliness, that, that's really just building rapport. The next step is learning how to ask the right questions, right? So in an interview, it's not about you just talking about yourself. It's you asking the right questions to set up so that your answer hits so much more. For example, in the interview, typically they'll say like, so Patrick, tell me about yourself. And how I usually answer that question is, sure, I can tell you a lot about myself, but you know, just curious to know, is there anything in particular you're looking to learn about me, right? Whether it's my previous sales experience or my personal life, like what, what are you interested in? And they usually say, well, anything you want. And then, you know, basically I'm setting up, right? And so if they say anything I want, usually I'll say like, okay, well, let me start with this. You know, my mission in life is to inspire others. And I go into the story about why that is. So I give them a taste of my personal personality, but it, it would be kind of weird if I started off the interview like that. If I just came in the room, hi, I'm Patrick, I'm here to inspire everybody. They're going to be like, what the heck is going on? Right. If I ask those right questions and set it up and earn the right to say something like that, then it's going to be so much more potent. Now apply that into any aspect of an interview or a sales call, whatever it is. Right. So if I asked the recruiter, like, you know, I just curious, like for you guys, you know, what kind of salesperson are you looking for right now? Are you looking for someone who's really good at closing, you know, really good at generating leads? Like I'm trying to see where I may be able to provide the most value. And they're going to give you the answer. They're going to be like, oh, that's a pretty interesting question. Well, right now, our main problem is generating leads. You know, our team's not that good at cold emailing, blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. So now that you understand their pain, you're going to be like, oh, interesting that you say 
that you're having trouble with the outbound cold emails. Do you mind if I tell you a bit about, you know, my experience at my last company where I was successfully able to do these outbound cold email campaigns? They're going to say, absolutely. To ask those questions, to understand the pains, you know, you're only going to really talk about yourself in the context of solving the other person's problem, right? If they have a problem with cold emailing, you know, it doesn't make sense for you to talk about how you're so good at closing deals because their problem at hand is the cold email side. So that's why you have to ask these questions first, set it up so that your answers are going to be so much more potent. And that's obviously a technique you can use in an interview when you're selling yourself. But what about in a sales meeting? It's the exact same thing. You ask a potential customer, you say, hey, just curious, what's your biggest hurdle right now when it comes to growing on social media? They're going to say, oh, you know, like we don't have an editing team to do blah, 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 blah. Do you mind if I tell you a little bit about, you know, some of the things that we did with our editing team? There you go. You see, it's the exact same thing. Ask the question, get them to talk about their problems, and then ask permission to talk about your solution. When they give you permission, it's almost like the feeling of they're asking you for help, not you begging to ask for their business. You always want to reverse the situation. People think as if like the buyer is up here and the seller's here and the, the seller has to be like, oh, please, please, you know, buy my product and service. It's not like that, guys. I always tell people, you know, like I, I run like advisory consulting business, right? In the Web3 space. And I always position it like, look, I don't have enough time to, you know, give my 100% to every single client. There's only a handful of people I want to work with. I only want to work with the best. I don't want to work with any scammers. I want to work with people who are honest, have integrity, and they have the potential to do something really big. And then, so when I position myself like that, they're actually thinking like, damn, I really want to work with Patrick, right? Because he's so selective in who he works with. And it's true. So in that situation, it's like people, they feel lucky when they work with me. And then if somebody feels lucky to work with me, my negotiating power is so much more higher. And I always tell people, I'm like, look, like, I'm not cheap and I'm probably going to charge the highest prices out of any consultant that you're going to reach out to. However, here's the people I work with. Here are my results. Here are the things that I can do for you. And based on that conversation, usually they will agree with it and they're willing to pay a premium to work with someone like me. Now it's all about positioning. So if you're a salesperson, how can you create a similar feeling where let's say you have a lot of options, you got skills, you have the ability to learn on the fly, you have the right attitudes to succeed in any environment. That's the characteristics all sales managers want. So if you position yourself in that way, they're going to want to hire you because they're going to be thinking, damn, man, like finally somebody that actually gets it. We got to hire this guy pronto. Now here's the thing. If you are not the person or you don't have the characteristics to fit that bill, then you actually have to improve yourself first in order to make that believable. Because you know you don't wanna be someone who's just smoking mirrors and just talks, but can't actually walk the walk. The best way to actually get clients or to get a sales job that pays you extremely well is to be that person that deserves that income. Because at the end of the day, if you're helping a company generate an income and you're, as a salesperson, is less than the, the amount that you bring in, then you're extremely valuable, right? And that's the key to the game and getting hired. Just showing someone that you're willing to put in the work, showing them that you're you're actually competent at what you do. And when you yourself are a good product, right? You think of yourself as a product or a service, right? Then it's gonna be easy for people to hire you. Actually, you'll have options because everybody will wanna hire you at that point, right? But you know, obviously easier said than done. These things you have to work on over time. It's not something that you can just watch this YouTube video and suddenly become better. You actually have to walk the talk. All right, so the final tip I have for you guys is this. You gotta show the employer your willingness to learn. The reality of sales is that it's constantly changing. Like I remember when I was working at Oracle, people who are older, who had like 10 years, five years of sales experience, but they had a lot of trouble using the new technology. And then sales is, I see it changing even further with the rise of artificial intelligence. Like you don't even have to be good at writing a cold email anymore. You just have to know how to write the prompts, put into chat GBT, and then it's going to write the email for you. The skill sets are changing. What is a good salesperson is constantly changing over time. The technology is constantly changing over time. Learning how to connect all these tools and use them effortlessly, that is a skill in itself. So the key to being good at sales is learning how to be adaptable. Of course, you know, there's fundamentals of being a good communicator. That's always going to stay in play. But all the technology side of efficiency and flow and, and speeding things up and tripling your efficiency, that is also very important, especially when it comes to prospecting. I know a lot of you guys do sales prospecting as beginners in sales because that's usually where you start out so show the employer you have the willingness to learn show that you're willing to drop your ego in order to become a better person a better salesperson right because growth is the name of the game and if you cannot grow and you're not learning from your mistakes you're not getting anywhere you're just pretty much stuck and you're just basically going to be an anchor in, in any team right but if you're willing to just be like all right 
maybe I don't know as much as I thought, right? Or maybe this guy, maybe he knows what he's talking about. Maybe I should try some of the tips that he gives, right? Showing that vulnerability, showing that you're willing to drop your ego and showing that you are willing to learn and improve over time. That's one of the most important things because somebody who's like talented or good at what they do is, is pretty dangerous, right? Like they, they can do really good work, but somebody that constantly improves every single day, they're a killer because even if they start lower than somebody else with that compound skill set development and that willingness to learn, they're going to crush everybody. They're even going to crush the people who are talented. So having the willingness to learn key, you know, you definitely hundred percent need to show the employer that you're going to do that because in sales, especially at startups and stuff like that, you're going to have to learn new stuff every single day. And if you cannot keep up with the pace, then you're going to get left behind. So show the person that you're not going to get left behind, that you're going to be able to follow with the troops and hopefully lead as well, because like all employers are looking for a talented people who can, when they lead an organization, if they have the capability to do that. Right. And so show that you are that kind of person and you go very far in life. All right. So with that said, guys, that's everything we got to cover for this video. If you want to learn more about how to take your sales game to the next level, make sure to check out my course, Sales Legacy at saleslegacy.com. Link is also in the description and I will see you in the next one.